Good morning and thank you Future Sergeant Rhodes for that throwback to me. I really appreciate it. Before we start today's lesson, we're going to go over the risk assessment. The overall risk assessment for today's lesson is low. Listen to your local guidelines, what they're putting out, your weather advisories, and if you are in a field environment, leave the wildlife wild and let them be free unlike you. So for today's lesson, we are determining a magnetic azimuth using a lensatic compass and two methods. We're going to be doing the compass to cheek method and with that method we're going to get a designated point within three degrees. The center hold method, it's a little less accurate. We are going to get to a designated point within 10 degrees. But before you even leave your mom's house, your grandma's house, or whoever's basement you are in, you're going to inspect the compass. So first thing you're going to do is take it out of the sheave if you have it. I do not have a sheath. So you're going to unravel the string, pull it through, ensure it is there and it's not falling off and it's not broken. Next, you're going to inspect your thumb loop. Ensure it is there. It's not going to just wiggle around and it's intact. After that, you're going to inspect the cover. Ensure the cover stops at 90 degrees, that it goes to the full 180 degrees and it's not just flopping around there. After that, you're going to inspect your base. Ensure your base is a smooth edge. It is not jagged or cut. After that, we are going to inspect the siding wire and the two siding dots, which are the on the inside of the compass. The siding wire has to be there, to, otherwise you're not going to get to the designated point that you need. After that, you're going to inspect your bezel ring, which has a luminous line on it as well. You need to make sure that that can spin a full 360 degrees without any interference. Next is your floating dial, which is inside the compass. You're going to move your compass 360 degrees to ensure that nothing is stopping it from floating around and doing its job. After that, you're going to inspect your rear sight. You're going to make sure that it goes to 45 degrees and stops, fully extends, and that it is not broken. Inside there, you're going to inspect the lens, make sure it is not cracked and it is there along with the siding line. After that, you need to ensure the black fixed index line is there. And once you ensure that is there, the last thing you have to inspect and look for is that this black, or I believe they are red sometimes, magnetic arrow is in there. So after you get that compass inspected, you can leave your grandma's basement and get to a field training environment. However, in your field training environment, you need to make sure there is no metal objects or electrical interferences. So for that, you need to make sure high tension power lines are about 55 meters away, 55 meters away. Field guns, trucks, and tanks need to be 18 meters away. 18 meters away. Telephone wire, copper wiring, C wire, also known as barbed wire, needs to be 10 meters away. 10 meters. The machine gun. I left mine in my truck. However, you need to be two meters away from that. Your steel helmet and your rifle has to be 0.5 meters away. It can be slung behind your back, but it has to at least be half a meter away. So, as you can tell, we are not in that type of environment. So how about we get there? All right, now that we're here, we're away from the terrible power line, guns, field trucks, trucks, tanks, any of that nonsense. We're away from that in this beautiful open area. All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is determine the azimuth using the compass to cheek method. The first thing you're gonna do is open the compass to a 90 degree angle, position the eyepiece to a 45 degree angle. Then you're going to pay, place your thumb through the thumb loop, establishing a steady base with your third and your fourth finger. And then you're going to put your index finger across the side of the base. Place your other hand into the compass plate and move both hands up to your face. Position your thumb through the loop where you can place your thumb against the cheekbone. You're going to move this and align it to get it in focus as much as you can until it is fully focused. Then you're going to align the sight piece with the siding wire at a designated point. We're going to be shooting for the casino.
see, but probably not in frame that you can see because it is out there. So that's what we're going to be looking for today. So I am going to cheek the compass, shooting my line, and here I'm reading the black azimuth index line, the black index line. So with that, I see it is 52 degrees west, 52 degrees. So with the compass to cheek, you're going to be within three. So it's going to be 49 to 55, but somewhere three degrees, give or take. But it will be in there as soon as we get to that designated point. So with, with compass to cheek method, there's also a second method, which is known as the center hold method. So with the compass to cheek method, you're going to have to move eyewear. Uh, you can't walk walk with it and see you're going to end up running into a tree or whatever may be in your way. So with the compass, the center hold method, it's faster. It's unfazed by visibility conditions. You don't have to remove eyewear. However, it'll give you, it's about 10 degrees off against the three. So the first thing with the center hold method, you're gonna open the compass to 180 degrees, which is a straight line. Position the eyepiece to the full extended upright position. You're gonna place your thumb in the thumb hole just like last, establishing a base with the third and fourth finger and index finger across the side. You're gonna place your second thumb in between the eyepiece and the lens. Secure the remaining fingers on the other hand and your other index finger across the side. Place your elbows on your side, which will ensure that it stays to your between your chest and your belt line. So you're going to tuck your elbows in. You're going to turn your entire body toward the designated point. In here, as said before, I am getting 50, 55 degrees. 55 degrees with the black index line. So you're using the black index line, once again, turning your entire body towards the point and getting set. So with that being said, on the center hold method, you're about 10 degrees off. You could be 10 degrees left, 10 degrees right. When you're talking about a thousand meter range, you're gonna be a hundred meters off. That's significant, especially if it's dark. So if you can use the compass to cheek method, that's gonna be a lot more fluent it's going to be a lot more accurate for you you're going to be three degrees off so in a thousand thousand meter target you may be 30 meters off which is going to be a lot easier to find your way so that concludes our uh, test today or our training today with the compass to cheek method and the the center hold method wow it took me a little bit so what we were supposed to go over today was the center hold method and the compass to cheek method. What did happen? Exactly that. Uh, if there's any questions, please let future Sergeant Rhodes know. This is it for the past Sergeant Rhodes. I'll catch you guys later.